Okay, so what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and define the example of a comparison between engineering and true strain for a one-dimensional example. And what we see here is we have a beam that's, going, that's initially one meter in length, and it's going to be stretched to 1.25 meters in length, and we're going to look at the engineering strain and the true strain that would result from that particular deformation. And so I'm going to try and come over here and grab my pen and see if we can describe those strains. So the engineering strain for this particular example would be equal to 1.25 minus 1 divided by 1 and that gives us 0 0.25 for our strain. If we use the true strain for these two cases we will have for the true strain it would be 1.25 divided by 1, and we take the log, or the natural log, of those two, and that gives us, as a result, 0 0.22. And so you can see, for the tensile strain in the one-dimensional case, the true strain, the magnitude of it, is less than the engineering strain. There must be a reason for that, and that is, in part, because the true strain is the true strain. So why do I say that this is the true strain? It's because there's, a, there's an example of something that's a pretty common action that we do wherein the engineering strain fails to describe what's taking place. And that is if we have a situation in which we have two-step deformation. So as you see here, we have the initial length. We're going to stretch it to 1.2 meters, and then we have a later process. It could be a, a forming operation that stretches it to 1.25. Okay. So the question is, which one of these two, the engineering strain or the true strain, is actually additive? So we're going to look at that case and see if we can define what's taking place. We have two steps. We have step one. We have step two. And then we have the final value. And we know we want to compare our values if we put this down as engineering strain versus true strain, if that's the comparison that we're doing. We knew for the prior example that we got 0 0.25, but we got 0 0.22 for the final version, right? So that's what we got previously. The question is, is that if we look at this for this calculation, if we actually sum step one and step two for the final version, do we get something that is equivalent to these? So for step one for the engineering strain, we can define it just as we did previously. 1.2 minus 1 divided by 1 gives us 0 0.2. Step 2 is going to be 1.25 versus the initial length of 1.2 divided by 1.2. Right. So step 1 is going from here to here. Step 2 is going from here to here. So step 1 is 0 0.2 and step 2 gives us 0 0.05, the difference between these two, divided by 1.2, and at least to two significant figures, it gives us 0 0.042 as a solution. For the true strain, we're going to need to take the log of 1.2 over 1, and we're going to need to take the log of 1.25 over 1.2. So the solution for this is 0 0.18 to two significant figures. And the solution for this is 0 0.041 to two significant figures. Okay, We add these two together, and we get as a, as a solution 0 0.242, or to two significant figures, 0 0.24. We add these two together, and we get 0 0.221, or to two significant figures, 0 0.22. It turns out these two give you exactly the same result. So if you have a multiple step process or any time in which you want to add the strains together, you need to use the true strain. And that's even more the case the larger the magnitude of strain is. So if we're talking about plastic strains, large distortions, in every instance, we're going to want to use the true strain. So if in doubt, the true strain always gives you the right answer, of course, assuming you did the right calculation. So that's an example for true strain. 
and thanks for watching.